If you're a professional portrait or fashion photographer, one of the limitations you may come up against is wardrobe options. Perhaps the outfit in the frame doesn't work, or worse still, important merchandise wasn't ready in time for the shoot. Either way, you've got a problem. That is, however, until you use Affinity Photo 2. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to add new garment patterns to your subject while keeping the natural look of creases and shape to the subject so it doesn't look fake. The key to unlocking this clever technique is Affinity Photo 2's advanced selection and blending mode features. What's more, this tutorial is actually pretty speedy, so you can work in real time with the client to edit on the go and try various patterns until selecting something you're both happy with. So let's get started. With your image open in Affinity Photo 2, our first task is to make a selection of the area you want to add the pattern to. In our case, it's the model's t-shirt, so head over to the left hand side of the interface and click on the Selection Brush tool, and the keyboard shortcut to this is W. You can change the size of the brush with the square bracket keys. Start to draw over the area you want to select. As I said, you can change the size of the brush with the square bracket keys, but when it gets to the more fiddly bits, you'll want to zoom in. So hit Command and Plus to get a really good look at the image. And we've missed a bit there, so we want to change the size of the brush and click to include that. And again, just on the left here. And this is where we take our time and make sure we get all the little bits selected. Now, but what happens if you draw your selection and unfortunately, and it takes too many pixels and some areas that you don't want to include, like the jeans area here. Well, don't worry, all you need to do is hold Alt and just draw out those pixels. And it can take a couple of attempts to get this right. So just take your time, zoom in, change the size of the brush, and sooner or later, the software will get it right. Okay, I missed a bit on the side here as well, so let's just include this little bit and get rid of this element here. So, we're pretty much there with the selection. So now it's time to turn our attention to your pattern. So click on the image that you'll be taking your pattern from, and we want to copy all of these pixels to the clipboard. So hit Command and A, and Command and C to copy these pixels. Jump back to your start image, and head up to Edit, and click Paste. Now, obviously this doesn't look quite right. The pattern area has covered pretty much all of our frame, but we can see the outline of our selection. So what we're going to do is head over to the Layers panel and locate the Mask option. And this is down at the bottom and identified by a circle within a square. And look what happens when we click on this. The pattern has been confined to our selection area, i.e. the t-shirt area. But it doesn't look quite right, it looks obviously quite fake, you can't see any creases, and this doesn't look natural at all. So what we're going to do is select the thumbnail of the layer, not the mask, and change the blending mode from normal to linear burn. Now, with your image, a different blending mode might work differently and be more successful. But for our image, linear burn works well. And you can see already that the shadow, the creases, the lines, makes this look very natural now. Click Command and D, because we're done with the selection. And what we're going to do is just breathe a little bit more life into these uh, areas here by changing the opacity level, just knocking it down a tiny bit so the pixels from the background layer, the creases, the lines, the shadows, seep through a little bit more. Now, lowering the opacity does have a knock-on effect because it takes a little bit of the saturation out of the image. So we're going to fix this. We're going to head to the Layers panel once more. We're going to click on the Adjustments icon and we're going to select HSL. Now, if we increase the saturation now, it will affect the whole image. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is drag the layer and pair it with our pattern layer. So that will only affect the T-shirt area now. So watch what happens when I increase the saturation. The t-shirt saturation increases, but the saturation over the model's face or the arms or the jeans or anything else doesn't change at all. So let's look at our start image, a plain white t-shirt. 
And our after image, we've added a new pattern that looks natural, as well saturated. You can see the lines and the creases, and it looks pretty cool. All that's left to do now is head up to File, scroll down to Export, and you can save the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. Have fun using Affinity Photos 2 selection and blending mode options, and I'll see you next time.